Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another video. This week, I wanna get into what does it mean when someone values you? I think so often we go into relationships and we don't really have a clear understanding as how it should look, what it should feel like when someone really respects and values and appreciates you. So let's get into it. Now, like always, before we do get into this week's video, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, don't forget to click on the subscribe button down below and click on post notifications. That will inform you each week when I do upload a new video with a brand new topic so you guys don't miss out. Now let's get into this. So there's definitely some key things and I wanna make sure that I kind of hit all the points. That way you really understand what does it mean when someone values you. Now, whether this is a new relationship or quite frankly, even a long-term relationship, you still have to be very self-aware as just how someone is treating you, behaving around you. Are you growing and you know learning about your past, healing from your wounds? So often I talk to people that are in relationships and they're doing all this great work on themselves and their partner isn't. And I think sometimes it can get really sticky in those situations because if you start growing and you're taking responsibility for yourself and you're managing those emotional triggers and things like that and the other person is not doing that kind of work, you're, you might hit a point in your relationship where you're kind of stumped and, or you might start seeing things in the relationship that you didn't see before. So that's why I wanna get into this because now you will fully understand what does it mean when someone values you and what does it mean when someone doesn't do these things. Okay, so the very first thing is this person is not trying to change you. So when someone's trying to change another person, whether they feel like they're doing it for their best interest or if they're just manipulative and abusive and they're looking to control, at the end of the day, that is the key word, control. So someone that's trying to change you is essentially trying to control you. They think they know what's best for you. They're not allowing you to go on this journey of life and go through all the ups and downs that you need to go on so you can learn the lessons that you need to learn. The other reason is if you think about it, if I'm healthy, it's not my job to try to change you. It's not my job to try to get you to see what I think you should do. I have to just be able to respect you and understand that this is your life journey. I'm in your life, but it's your journey to go through and experience what you need to experience. And I'm here just as your partner in life, just as your friend in life, just as your sister in life, in order to help you along the way, guide you here and there. But again, I have to be good to go and secure in my own self to let you do that by yourself and, have, and me just be the kind of support system for you, not the leader of the show. Like it's it's my job to take control of the situation and get you to see that you're wrong and get you to change and, and all of those things. My only job is to, if I'm feeling disrespected or if something doesn't feel right for me, to set, of course, firm boundaries and enforce my standards, but it's not my job to try to put you into a category of what I think you should be. So this is another sign that this person values you. This person is kind. And what I mean by that is I'm very big on when you're thinking about, especially in romantic relationships, when you're thinking about the qualities of a person that you're trying to attract, I want this person to be kind. I want them to be sweet. I want them to be loving. I want you to understand what those words mean. And for me, someone who's kind is not just kind to me, they're kind to others. So this person is not judgmental, they're not constantly talking about other people or gossiping about other people. They don't feel as though that they're above anyone else. They understand that they're an equal level playing field, so they're not e egotistical, they're not controlling, they're a kind-hearted soul, they're a gentle soul. They see someone who's struggling and want to help them for good reasons, not for their own reasons of possibly feeding that ego inside. I've seen so many people in life who do great work for other people, but they do it to a level where it becomes too much, where you realize, wow, you're actually not doing it for the right reasons, you're just doing it for the recognition, or you're doing it for how it's going to make everyone else view you. You're not doing it from coming from a heart space of, of actually connecting to another person. And that could be more of that narcissistic personality. So the next thing is this person makes your relationship a priority. This is not a situation where you feel like you're always doing all of the work. You are a priority in this person's life. So that means that they're going to do things even when it's not easy for them. They're going to do things even when at times they don't want to. They're going to put 
and they're gonna find balance with that, but they're, you're going to always feel as though you are a priority in this person's life. You're not second fiddle. This is a really huge one. When this person values you, when you get into a disagreement, they know how to have self-control. They know how to not go too far to say something or do something that they know would either hurt you or hinder your relationship with this person. So they know when to stop and, and kind of take a step back so they can recollect their thoughts or their feelings or their, their emotions. They fully own that stuff so they don't go too far with something. A person that is very reactive doesn't really value you or themselves quite frankly because the ability to really own that means that I value myself enough also to not let myself go from zero to 60. I don't want to be in that energetic state. I don't want to say something also that I'm going to regret. regret. I don't want to feel those feelings that I'll end up feeling which is guilt and shame so I'm going to be self-aware that I'm going too far these are my feelings, I need to own them, and being able to say, you know what, we need to break away from this, I need a break, or just letting that other person know that it's getting a little bit too heated now and they need a moment. That ability to be that type of a person, see, because here's the thing, in order, of course they don't wanna hurt you because they value and they don't wanna do anything or say anything to ruin what it is that you guys have, whether it's a friendship, romantic relationship, et cetera, but they also don't wanna be that person. They don't wanna be that guy or girl that like becomes erratic, does something or says something that's completely out of their character just because they're emotionally charged. They are emotionally mature enough to be able to hold on to their emotions, their emotions, regardless of the situation, that's a grown up. That's someone that values you and that's one that actually respects themselves. A really huge quality and it goes both ways for men and women, but I think the way I'm going to probably explain this is probably for the women out there just because I am a woman, but they support you. They wholeheartedly support you. When you need this person, this person is there. They do not judge you. They support any endeavor, career choice, hobby, wanting to lose weight. They are 100% your biggest cheerleader. I feel like in this day and age, women are very independent and they have to learn how to balance that kind of masculine side and feminine side. And especially when you've been in relationships where you've been disappointed, you have faced abandonment, it is hard and you've always taken the world on your shoulders because maybe that's just what's happened in your life experience is that you had no choice but to survive in that way. You start to play a tape that says, I have to do this all on my own. And when someone really values you, they don't want you to do it on your own. And quite frankly, you know, you don't wanna do it on your own either. You've just been programmed and trained to be that type of a person that says, all I can count on is myself. So I have to carry this load all the time. And like I said, this person doesn't want you carrying that load ever again by yourself. Now, a strong woman in that sense to be even stronger is to let that load go and give it to someone else at times and let someone else come in and help you and support you in the ways that you know you really want, but you're scared to let that guard down and let that vulnerability come through. And here's the thing is strong people need strong partners. A strong woman can only work with a strong man. He has to be able to be sensitive and empathetic to what it is that she's been through in order for him to build trust with her to then take that load off of her. Okay, so the next thing, and it kind of ties into that last point, is he's not going to break your heart. So will people fall out of love from time to time? Yeah, those things happen. Do people grow apart? Yep, that happens as well. But he will never do anything to you that he knows would cause real harm to you. So there's going to be no cheating, there's going to be no lying, there's no. There's not going to be anything that he, he or she knows that there's no selfishness essentially. They are always going to think about their ramifications before they do something. They're going to be a grown up and they're going to have difficult conversations and they're going to end relationships in the right way. So when someone cheats and when someone lies, that's just a little boy or a little girl. It's someone who is 
probably doesn't even know the wounds that are going on inside of them. And unfortunately, because they're unable to deal with what it is that they're really feeling and really experiencing, it then kind of manifests in other ways, which is jumping ship. So rather than kind of owning their stuff and saying, you know what, I'm going to take responsibility for myself, because think about it, a healthy person, someone who is healthy, is going to value the person that they were just in a relationship with. They're not going to do anything that is just selfish or they're not going to do anything that's cowardly, that kind of avoids them digging into their own self to figure out what's going on inside of them that would make them jump ship or lie or do something that would hurt you. They're going to own that stuff and be able to have adult conversations. They're going to be able to handle themselves emotionally and mentally in the best way that they know how in order to make sure that it doesn't hurt you. Something that I think is really important and I don't think a lot of people really put emphasis on this is someone that really respects you and values you and loves you is going to always listen no matter how exhausted they are, no matter how many times they don't wanna hear talk about it anymore, something that you're going through or experiencing, they're always going to have an ear because they're your friend at the end of the day and they're concerned and they love you and they value you and they don't want you to keep going around this hamster wheel with whatever it is that you're doing or struggling with or feeling or thinking. And so you're always going to have that person there. A person that's mature is always going to have the time for a conversation, even when they don't really want to have it. And especially when it has to do with them. Again, this person's going to be able to hold on to themselves. They've worked on themselves enough that that ego isn't at the forefront where they can't hear what you're saying. They have a lot of empathy so they can put themselves in your shoes regardless of how they feel and at least validate those feelings that you're having. And you guys are going to be able to compromise and work together so you can come to an understanding on things regarding your own relationship, regarding outside stuff. A person that doesn't value you and is probably in the relationship for the wrong reasons, they're not going to have the time. They're going to think you're too much. They're going to think you're obsessing about something. They're not going to be gentle. They're not going to be kind. They're not going to be patient with you. And the last thing, and for me as a woman, this is very important because there are certain roles that we do carry. Now we both have masculine energy and feminine energy and there are times where the woman needs to show up for the man in certain ways and stand up for him and be that rock for him and vice versa. But th this person values you in the sense that, and I think this kind of just like summarizes it, is this person wants to protect you, right? Like we talked so much about how this person doesn't wanna hurt you, this person would never make you suffer, this person wants to help, this person wants to be supportive. Um, I think that level of protectiveness that this person has over you, like when you think of like a big brother to a little sister, a dad to a little girl, even like a mom to a son, it's the same thing. It's just genders that we're, you know, that we have that are different, but for the most part, this person is your protector. This is more than your cheerleader. This is, I don't want you to go through anything difficult. I don't want you to face this alone. You're not facing it alone. And I'm here to help you as much as I possibly can and protect you and do that in a healthy way. I think a, a balance in relationships is understanding when you are loving someone and when you're doing it for the wrong reasons, when you're going too far with helping, where you need to let this person fall and stand on their own two feet and, and that you can't force them to learn these lessons if they don't want to learn it. So a huge part of the protectiveness is you feeling safe around this person, you feeling safe to be you, to say what you need to say, to think what you need to think, that you're not too much, that that this person's not going to leave just because you're going through something right now or that you failed at something. They're always there for you because they see who you are, they see you. When someone really values you, they've connected to that heart space with you. Now we're dealing with like real soul deep connection where we can see each other and we can see past a lot of the BS, right? We can see past that ego, we can see past those wounds. Again, the balance in this is, and I think a lot of empaths and highly sensitive people struggle with this, is so often they get linked up in relationships because they quickly see past the dysfunction 
And that's not what this is about. It's not about seeing past dysfunction. It's about seeing past the little stuff that doesn't, that isn't at the forefront of like abuse. Especially as a woman, when we think of the protector, we think of like a man, a man's man, like a man that comes in and saves the day in only the ways that a man knows how to. Same thing with a woman to a man. And what she brings to the table is what that man really values. And most often it's going to be a balance between both things. We all need both energies. So when the woman comes in to protect the man in that sense, maybe it's the nurturing stuff, the emotional stuff, the supportive stuff, or maybe she comes in and handles business because she knows how to, right? Maybe she's a great businesswoman and she can come in and like take charge of that meeting um, and vice versa. We both want each other to play both roles. I think sometimes depending on the gender or which energy you lead with the most, you're going to want the opposite sometimes from that person because that's what you lead with the most. So if you lead with a lot of masculine energy, you're going to want that protectiveness in that feminine energy in that way more than the woman coming in and saving the day and taking control of that meeting and doing everything that you know, you used to do, she's doing in that moment, but there are going to be times where you're going to need her to do those things. But majority of the time, I think you're always searching for the energy level that you don't lead with in the other person. And in that sense, you feel protected. So hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you got a really good understanding as what does it mean when someone really values you, when someone really respects you, and, and even a little bit of an understanding of healthy dynamics and healthy relationships. I think it's great to educate yourself on this stuff. So often I talk to clients and they have absolutely no idea what does it mean when someone values values me? What does it mean to be in a healthy relationship? And so now you can have your 101 guide to healthy relationships right here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to click down below for any of my courses or to do private coaching with me and I'll see you next week.